G'day all you beautiful people, my name is Daz, I talk footy, hence the title of the channel. In today's video, I'll be reacting to some AFL hot takes and I cannot wait for it. If this video does well and you want to be mentioned in a future hot takes video, then comment below. You can either use hashtag hot takes or just hot take and then your comment so I don't take anyone out of context. That is the last thing that I want to do. These hot takes are scaled from an unpopular AFL opinion thread from Reddit. And in future hot take videos, I only want to use my community's comments. I feel like that is a better way to do things. And I might put a post out on social media. So follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll put them in the description and at the end of the video. And there is no other preamble to do. Let's get straight into the takes. 7.50 p.m. is too late for a night game. Have them all start at 7.10. Now, I kind of agree with this in a way. I don't think 7.10 should be the start time. I'm happy to go to sort of 7.20, 7.30 Victorian time. Big bias, I know, but technically when it comes to the time zones, we are the latest. Well, the East Coast is anyway. So, I, I, 7.30, I don't mind. And I know there are people that are probably going to re uh, read that and go, well, it can start at 7.50, just make the game shorter. I'm cool with the duration Half an hour earlier it isn't really that big of a deal to me. I know it probably will be to the AFL and to the interstate um, people. So if it does make that big of a difference where you are, please let me know. I'd love to know the reasoning. But I agree, 7.50 is probably a little bit too late and I don't even have kids. The grand final should be played at the home team's venue. Completely agree. Um, this is one of those things like having the grand final rematch in the first game of the year. Makes all the sense in the world to me, and it's astonishing that it doesn't happen. Although, unlike the previous take, I know why the AFL won't implement this, and it's it's money. It's as simple as that. MCG holds more people. If every stadium had 100,000 capacity, I'm sure this could have been a thing, but it's not. And if you're going to complain that the attendance is low, look at how many corporate tickets go out. It's not like 100,000 fans, both for the home and away team, can get into the ground. So... It's kind of a shit show in my opinion, and it's why prelim finals, even on a TV, sound louder than the grand finals. The emotional investment the fans put in create the best fan noise. That's just common sense. Prelims are amazing. The grand final atmosphere is, of course, fantastic for the nostalgia and the history, but if we want more crowd noise, make it the home venues, but I know that they can't. Tom Mitchell is not a top 25 player in the league. Hell, I'll be as bold to say that there are 50 blokes I'd rather build a team around. I'm kind of on the fence on this one. I think Tom is a top 25 player in the league. But midfielders to build around, Tom Mitchell is one of those guys you'd love to build a midfield around, surely. You'd have to put better midfielders than what Hawthorne have around him because to get the ball and feed the ball out to outside midfielders is the name of the game. It absolutely is, and I don't think that's deniable anymore. When Tom isn't handballing the ball out to elite midfielders, such as the last couple of years... He's kind of gone under the radar. I don't want Tommy getting the ball on the outside and trying to do pinpoint passes. Bite off your 20 to 30 meter kicks if you can hit the target, and generally he can. It's when he bombs away do I get a little annoyed. But stick to what he's good at. Appreciate what he's good at. I think he's a top 25 player. I definitely don't think he's top 10, but I think he's in the top 25. But as far as midfielders to build around, I feel like there are more outside players to choose from than there are the inside ball accumulators like him. If you gave him A-grade midfielders, Tommy Mitchell would be so beneficial to a team. So I half disagree with the first part of the take, really disagree with the second bit. Cyril Rioli is, was underrated. Difficult one here, two Hawthorne takes in a row actually, but the last Hawthorne take I can assure you. I disagree. I think Cyril is the most properly rated player, probably that I've seen. I think most fans know that Cyril was a star. I think fan frustration kicks in with the amount of overhype that was given to Cyril by social media managers when they were first hopping on the highlights train. And of course, being Bruce McAvaney's favorite for a decade was always going to bring him probably more hate than was necessary. I think Cyril was a star. He's a Hawthorne immortal and a Hawthorne legend, but he's not an AFL legend in my opinion. He is an AFL star. So that's where I sit. I don't think he's underrated. The Richmond dynasty doesn't deserve to be in the same conversation as Hawthorne, Brisbane, and Geelong of the 21st century. All three of those teams would beat any of the Richmond teams by 10 goals. Now, let's shelve the first part of that equation for just a tick. Who cares if Brisbane, Geelong, and Hawthorne 
could do that. It's all hypothetical, of course, but what does that matter? Richmond still won three flags in four years, and if it wasn't for a friggin' seven-foot American, would have won four. They deserve to be in the conversation. They had a dynasty in the 21st century. Just because they might be the least talented side on paper doesn't mean they don't deserve to be in the conversation. Richmond were a dynasty-based system. I think Hawthorne were a dynasty-based system plus talent. I think Brisbane were a dynasty-based team, which is why I think they're the best. And Geelong were a dynasty-based team as well. I think you can identify the system more with Hawthorne and Richmond. And it was talent across the board with Brisbane-Geelong. And if all of them had kind of a round-robin system, I think Brisbane's team was the best of the lot. The 2000 Bombers should not be in the conversation for greatest team of all time. Uh, This is wrong. Just straight up. Um, 1999 and 2001. So those two Essendon teams, you could say underwhelmed. Both incredibly injured towards the back end of the year especially. But the 2000 Bombers lost one game for the year. In round 20 or 21 against the Doggies at Colonial Stadium back then. Uh, Won the flag, won their finals easily. They didn't look like anyone could catch them, and they didn't. So why would they not be in the greatest conversation of all time? This this is a bad take for mine. Just a just a terrible take. Of course they are. So that's it, guys. Some AFL hot takes there. What do you think? Do you agree with these takes? Do you disagree with my analysis of them? Comment below. Let me know. And don't forget to put hot take in the comment section and let me know your hot takes. So when I get around to doing a second one, I don't know when it'll be, but it will be sometime, probably in December, of course, as well. I will get to it then. I cannot wait to see what you guys have got. Let me know if there's anything specific that you want to see, anything that you want me to talk about, and I'm more than happy to do so, because my goal is twofold. One, make content I enjoy making. Two, making sure you guys enjoy it, because if I make content that I enjoy that you guys hate, means nothing. So I want to deliver what you guys want. So if there are things out there that you want me to talk about, more than happy to hear suggestions. I hope you're doing well. A lot of us are coming up to Christmas break from... Uh, jobs at the moment but whether you celebrate Christmas or not I hope that break is fantastic if you've already started it lucky you I'll see you in the next video I hope you're all doing well goodbye